Welcome back, Autobots, and Decepticons, and everything in between to another Transformers theory. Today's is going to cover if Blackout became Grindor in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, when the question of Grindor being a resurrected Blackout is proposed, there is a deep divide among the fandom. A lot of people believe that Grindor and Blackout are two distinct characters, while others believe that Grindor is the revived version of Blackout. I personally believe the latter to be true since there's a lot of evidence to prove that Grindr is the resurrected version of Blackout. Now, I do want to stress that we are all entitled to our own opinions. After all, as of this recording, we're talking about a 13-year-old movie here, so your headcanon can be whatever you want it to be. I am just here to propose the facts and logic that connect these two characters being the same individual, and hopefully I may be able to convince some of you who think otherwise. And if not, that's totally fine. With that out of the way, allow me to prove to you how Blackout and Grindor are the same character. Now, I believe a good starting point is to explain exactly who Blackout and Grindor are. Blackout appeared in the Transformers 2007 movie and was the Sikorsky MH-53 Pavlo 3 Decepticon that attacked the Sox and Ford Operations base in Qatar. He would later be killed by Captain Lennox shooting a grenade into his crotch as F-22 Raptors pounded him with missiles. His body would later be taken apart and dumped into the Laurentian Abyss along with his fellow dead Decepticons. Grindor, on the other hand, appeared in the sequel Transformers Revenge of the Fallen and was the Sikorsky CH-53E Super Stab Decepticon that transported Sam and friends to an abandoned factory where they would come face to face with Megatron. He would be later killed by Optimus Prime after Megatron called him in for backup during the forest battle. What happened to his body after is unclear, but it's likely that it was transported to Nest. Now with that brief overview out of the way, you now may be wondering why the two look nearly identical. And the reason for that is because the animators needed someone for Optimus to beat the snot out of, and because creating a new CGI model from the ground up would take a lot of time and cost a lot of money, they simply just reused Blackout's CGI model as cannon fodder for Prime. This explains the massive continuity error on why Grindr has robot mode kibble from a Sikorsky MH-53 Pavlo, despite him transforming into a Sikorsky CH-53E Super Stallion. An easy way to spot this is if you look at Grindr's rotor blades. Grindor has six rotor blades on his back which is the same amount the Pavlo has. But in reality, he should have seven because the Super Stallion has seven rotor blades instead of six. This practice of reusing deceased characters for cannon fodder got worse in Dark of the Moon. The Audi R8 Decepticon, better known as Sideways, was killed by getting cut in half by Sideswipe. However, somehow he reappeared in Dark of the Moon just to be killed off again. Brawl, who was killed by Bumblebee in Transformers 2007, also reappears in Dark of the Moon, this time sporting a new color scheme. But his CGI model wasn't just used once, folks, but twice in the same scene for another character that was killed by Optimus. And I plan to cover this debacle in a future video. But to get back on track, the main reason why people are against the idea of Blackout being Grindor is due to Grindor's massive size. As we know, Optimus is 28 feet tall, and Blackout from foot to rotor is 33 feet tall. However, from foot to head, he is 29 feet tall, which puts him and Prime roughly at eye level with each other. Grindor, on the other hand, from foot to rotor, stands at a massive 50 feet tall, and from foot to head, he is 43 feet tall, dwarfing the Autobot leader. So this 17 foot increase alone would make it impossible for the two to be one in the same. However, Grindor's size in the movie is actually very inconsistent, because he goes from being small to huge, then being small again, and then huge when he gets killed. There are only two shots where Grindor stands at 50 feet tall. The first instance is when Megatron sends Optimus flying through the air. The reason why we know Grindor is 50 feet tall here is because he completely dwarfs Megatron in this shot. As we know, Megatron is 35 feet tall, and if we draw a line from the top of his head to Grindor, we can see that it reaches the bottom of his left side cockpit. Now, you may be wondering why Megatron is slightly taller in the scale chart image. And that is because in this scene, Megatron has his legs slightly bent, while in the scale chart he is standing perfectly straight. And just for funsies, this is how Megs would scale with Grindor if he was the size of Blackout in this scene. As we can see, Megatron is actually taller. The final scene where Grindor stands at 50 feet is when Optimus is climbing down from his body. We can clearly see that Prime is dwarfed by the sheer size of Grindor's body. 
with him only being eye level with Grindor's hips, which matches up to the scale chart on the right. However, if we pull up a scale chart of Prime next to Blackout, we can easily rule out that Grindor without a shadow of a doubt isn't 33 feet tall here. Now besides those two scenes, Grindor during the rest of the Force battle is the same size as Blackout. If we look at the shot where Optimus is charging Grindor, we can see that Optimus is no longer half the size of Grindor, but is now almost the same height. If we pull up the Grindor scale comparison, we can clearly see that he is no longer 50 feet in this scene, but more so 33. This checks out if we pull up the Blackout scale comparison, and as we can see, it's a perfect match. The reason why Prime on the scale chart looks bigger than he does in this scene is because he's crouching down. More examples of Grindor being 33 feet tall is during the scene where Optimus is being roughed up by Starscream, and during the scene where Optimus goes ham on the Decepticons. As you can clearly tell in this shot, Grindor is nowhere near 50 feet tall, because if he was, he would be out of frame. In this scene, he is practically eye to eye with Optimus, which lines up perfectly with the scale chart of Blackout. So with that evidence presented, I hope that you now understand that Grindor was never a consistent 50 foot tall robot, with him being 33 feet tall for the majority of the fight. But now the question is why did this scaling issue happen? And well, there's clearly no in-universe explanation because Transformers just can't grow and shrink at will, especially by intervals of 17 feet. But there must be some technical reason behind this, right? Well, though there's no official answer, I have a pretty good guess. Grindor having these massive height continuity errors between shots was completely intentional. In the special features DVD for Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, there is a pre-visualization scene for the Force battle. These pre-visualizations are created in order to visualize complex scenes before filming them. In this previs, Grindor would have been decapitated in a different way. Instead of Optimus climbing up his body in order to tear his face in two, Optimus would have kicked flipped off a Starscream and landed on Grindor's shoulders, before plunging his hooks in. For one reason or another, this kickflip was changed to Optimus tearing off Starscream's arm. So, the animators now needed a new badass way for Optimus to be able to get on top of Grindor in order to decapitate him. So, they decided to scale Grindor up in order for Optimus to be able to get on top of him. This had to be done because it would be physically impossible for Optimus to be able to climb up on top of someone who was roughly the same size as him without making them cripple under his weight. This is why Grindor is nearly twice the size of Optimus, since this height increase would allow him to be able to support the weight of Optimus without him buckling. In addition to this, making Optimus climb up and down Grindor's body is just a badass, which is something Michael Bay strives for, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was the one who came up with this idea. Now, if you think this explanation is crackpot, characters have been scaled up just to make them look cool in a shot. For example, Bumblebee in Transformers Age of Extinction in one shot was nearly the same size as Optimus Prime. And as we know, this is totally inaccurate because Bumblebee is only 16 feet tall, with the top of his head reaching Optimus's upper thigh. In this shot, he's literally eye to eye with Hound, who as we know is 24 feet tall. And the worst part about this is that this height change is very abrupt, since in the shot right before this, Bumblebee is definitely way smaller than Hound and Optimus. And the reason why he looks bigger in this shot than than he does in the scale chart is because Prime is standing a few steps back from him. So with that said, altering a character's height in order to make the scene look cooler isn't anything new. Grindor just happened to be the first case of it. Hey, Editor Trans Theories here. While editing, I actually found out that Grindor wasn't the first case. Funny enough, it was actually Blackout. In one scene of the Transformers 2007 movie, he's actually taller than Grindor. If you look at the scene where he's destroying the military aircrafts, those are Boeing C-17A Glowmaster 3s, which are 55 feet and 1 inch from ground to the top of the tail. And as we can see in this shot, Blackout is clearly taller than them, which as we know was done just to make him look cool in the shot which he certainly does. Now back to the video. So now the question is, what is Grindor's cannon height? And well, to answer this, we're going to need to take into account how big his vehicle mode is. A common misconception is that the Sikorsky CH-53E Super Stallion, which is Grindor's vehicle mode, is massive compared to the Sikorsky MH-53 Pavlo. But this actually isn't the case. The Super Stallion is essentially a slightly upsized Pavlo with some extra bells and whistles. To prove this, I lined up the two choppers from their refueling probes. As you can see, the Super Stallion is definitely bigger, but not by much. 
For some exact dimensions, the Pavlo is 88 feet long and 25 feet tall, while the Super Stallion is 99 feet long and 27.9 feet tall. With Grindor being 50 feet tall, it is physically impossible for him to transform into the Super Stallion. For example, if we compare Blackout's height to the length of his vehicle mode, he is approximately able to transform into a vehicle that's a little under two and a half times his height. And if you're wondering why I chose to scale this chart at the base of the cockpit, that is because that's where the true mass of the helicopter begins. Furthermore, the refueling probe in robot mode merely just sticks out of Blackout's chest, so starting the chart at the top of it would give us inaccurate measurements. But to get back on track, since Grindor is physically identical to Blackout in every way besides the rust, this would mean that he must be able to transform into a vehicle that is a little under two and a half times his height. But here is where we run into a massive problem. As we can see, Grindor is way too big to be able to transform into the Super Stallion. Upon using Megatron as a ruler who is 35 feet tall, there is roughly a little under 35 feet of robot that still needs to go somewhere. So with that said, it's physically impossible for a 50 foot Grindor to be able to transform into the Super Stallion. However, it is plausible that a 33 foot grinder could actually transform into it. In this chart, I swapped out the Pavlo for the Super Stallion and compared it to Blackout being able to transform into a vehicle that is a little under two and a half times his height. As we can see here, it is almost an exact match, but the Stallion is just slightly bigger. So when it comes to the question of what Grindor's cannon height is, him standing at 33 feet is more accurate because him being 50 feet tall would not allow him to transform into the Super Stallion, while him standing at 33 feet is almost a perfect match. And since he was this height for the majority of the time when he was fighting Optimus in the forest, I think we can conclude that Grindor's cannon height is 33 feet tall. So now the question is, if they are supposed to be the same character, how did Blackout get resurrected to become Grindor? Well, as we know after Blackout was killed, his body would later be taken apart and dumped into the Laurentian Abyss, along with his fellow dead Decepticons. Almost two years later, Soundwave would organize a strike team to resurrect Megatron using the shard that was stolen from Nest. When Scapel slammed a shard into Megatron's chest, it caused a huge energy burst that the Constructicons had to shield their optics from. Now this point is significant because it's entirely possible that the energy that came off of the shard was able to hit Blackout's corpse. This is not far-fetched since earlier in the film when we saw Sam drop the shard, it created an energy blast that made Sam's entire kitchen come to life. And in Transformers 2007, when Sam fell with the Allspark, it created an energy wave that made nearby machines come to life. So with that said, it's highly likely that this is how Blackout got revived. Even screenwriter Roberto Orki, who co-wrote Revenge of the Fallen with Alex Kurtzman and Aaron Kruger, supported this theory as a possible explanation on why a Blackout lookalike appeared in Revenge of the Fallen. However, he wasn't too sure if that character was meant to be Blackout or a different character entirely. On June 24th, 2009, during a TFW 2005 Ask Orky Anything Q&A, a fan asked Orky, was that Blackout? Was he just revived off camera along with Megatron? Orky would respond with the following, could explain it that way, but I can't remember if he's ever called Blackout in the movie. Is there a Revenge of the Fallen Blackout toy? Now, a counter-argument you may have is that the Shard was only able to revive Megatron because they used Scrap Metal's parts to rebuild his body. This is evident because Scapple mentioned that he needed parts, and ordered the Constructicons to sacrifice Scrap Metal for the job. Once those parts were in place, he then was able to use the Shard to revive Megatron. By this logic, it is impossible for a Transformer to be revived by the Shard that wasn't already in one piece, meaning Blackout could not be revived by the Shard's energy because he was all mangled up. Though this is a very good point, the Shard actually was able to revive a mangled up character through the use of the energy wave. Scrap Metal, the Constructicon that was ripped apart in order to rebuild Megatron, later appears next to Hightower during the scene where the Constructicons combined to form Devastator. So with that in mind, without a shadow of a doubt, Blackout was able to be revived through the use of the Shard's energy blast. And this can be further proven when you notice that Grindor has all this rust on him. As we know, Blackout's body was dumped alongside Megatron's and the rest of the dead Decepticons. When Megatron got resurrected by the Allspark Shard, he had rust spots all over his body due to him being underwater for nearly two years. If you look at Grindor in the film, he has similar rust spots all over his body as well, which can be explained by the fact that his body rusted while it was underwater. Now, when it comes to the copying and pasting of CGI models meant to be cannon fodder, the animators usually don't attempt to alter them in any way. 
the only outliers being Brawl, since he has his deep desert color scheme in Dark of the Moon, and of course Grindor because he has all this rust over his body. The production team wouldn't just go out of their way to alter Blackout's texture files for no reason at all. And based upon what I said earlier, I believe that they added this rust onto him to show that he was resurrected. Since we're still on the topic of rust, in the 2007 film, if you examine Blackout's body in this scene, it has rust on it. Rust that matches up similarly to Grindor's CGI model. I say similar because this Blackout body is a physical prop and the prop isn't 100% accurate to the CGI model, since it does have a handful of differences. For example, the air intakes have this extra piece on it, in addition to having the markings that says US Air Force 680352. These two elements are not present on the CGI model. However, what is important here is to note where the rust on Blackout's body is located and how it compares to the rust on Grindor's body. As we can see, he has rust around his rotor hub, and in the film, rust appears around that area. In addition to this, he has this combination of scorch marks and rust on one of his forearms, and this pattern of corrosion is seen on Grindor's left forearm. Now, you may be wondering what the in-universe explanation is for why Blackout already had rust on him before he was thrown into the abyss. And, well, you're going to have to wait on that answer because I will be covering it in my Why the Decepticons Were Dismantled video, so stay tuned. So, with that interesting fact out of the way, you now may be wondering why Blackout decided to change his vehicle mode to a Sikorsky CH-53E Super Stallion. And, the real-world reason for this is because the Sikorsky MH-53 Pavlo 3 was retired by the U.S. Air Force on September 30, 2008. So, the production team needed the next closest thing to it. That, of course, being the Super Stallion. As for the in-universe explanation, Transformers naturally like to switch up their vehicle modes as time goes on. For example, Bumblebee throughout the series had eight unique different vehicle modes, and the Decepticon leader had five under his belt. As for how Blackout acquired it, that can be easily explained. After the USS Topeka was sunk by Megatron, it's safe to say that the military sent out a handful of helicopters in order to save any survivors. It's very likely that a Super Stallion was present during this rescue mission, and when Blackout came out of the water, he took it on as his new alternate mode. Another thing you may be wondering is why the rust did not go away when Blackout scanned his new vehicle mode. While when Optimus scanned his new vehicle mode, all the rust that he once had was now replaced with new parts. And well, the reason for that is because rust that naturally accumulates on a Transformer does not go away even when they switch alternate forms. The reason why Optimus was able to get rid of the rust that he had on him was because he scanned a rusty vehicle adopting its physical features. He did not accumulate the rust on his vehicle over the years of sitting at the theater. We know this because Optimus tells us that he took this current form as a means to escape Cemetery Wind. And this is further backed up by the images Cemetery Wind has of Optimus Prime when he was leaving Mexico City. As we can see, the truck is already rusty. Another example of this would be when Bumblebee took the form of a beaten up 1977 Camaro. As we know, he was able to get rid of that rust that he had on him after he scanned his 2010 Camaro. Though we never got to see Bumblebee scan the 77 Camaro, I think it is safe to say that when he scanned it, it was already beaten up. These would be examples of imitated rust, but an example of rust that naturally accumulated but never went away would be Megatron. As we know after he was revived, Megs had rust spots all over him. However, when Megatron went to scan his Mac M915 tanker truck, the rust did not go away. If you look at Megatron's face from Revenge of the Fallen to Dark of the Moon, the rust spots are practically identical. So with that said, that is why the rust did not go away when Blackout scanned his new vehicle mode. Now the last thing I would like to cover in this section is one minor hole in this theory. During the North Atlantic sequence, the sonar on the USS Topeka submarine picked up five contacts diving down to Megatron's body, those being Ravage, Scrap Metal, Mixmaster, Rampage, and Longhaul. However, six contacts are coming up after Megatron's resurrection, the sixth of course being Megatron. This begs the question on why we did not see a seventh contact for Blackout listed. There really isn't a good explanation for this hole, but the best I can come up with is that the sonar accidentally tagged Blackout under one of the pre-established contacts. Another possible explanation could be that Blackout, for some reason or another, decided to wait a while before moving, hence why the sonar did not pick him up. 
But in hindsight, if you compare this hole to the current evidence I have provided so far, I think it is safe to say that this does not rupture the theory of Blackout being Grindor. Now another reason why a lot of fans don't consider Blackout and Grindor to be one and the same is because of Grindor's toy bio. An excerpt from his bio states, He is both a highly talented fighter and instinctive strategist. Every moment of a battle is laid out in his head before the first shot is ever fired. Uh, where was that in the film since last I checked Grindor got his ass handed to him? He virtually did nothing during the forest battle, basically only managing to saw Prime's side before getting his arm cut off, getting his chest slashed open, being assaulted by Starscream's artillery, getting a blade thrown into his leg, and then getting his face torn open by Prime's hooks. For some master strategist, Grindor comes off as quite dumb in battle. At the end of the day, these toy bios just gave these figures a cool backstory in order to get kids to fall in love with the character, and subsequently buy the figure. They should not be taken as canon because they are usually not indicative of what the character did in the film. The next thing I would like to cover is the handful of other instances where Grindor has been classified as Blackout. In The Revenge of the Fallen, the junior novel, which uses an earlier version of the script to play out its events, the helicopter Decepticon is named Blackout and not Grindor. Grindor. Furthermore, in the novel, instead of getting his head torn in two, Blackout is killed by getting stabbed through the chest. You can actually see this original death scene in the pre-visualization for the forest battle. Another instance is in the special features DVD of Revenge of the Fallen. In it, there is a Decepticon scale chart that appears. The name Blackout is listed for the Helicopter Decepticon instead of Grindor. Lastly, despite the Helicopter Decepticon being called Grindor in the Revenge of the Fallen video game, internal files for it identify him as Blackout. A good chunk of the file names for Grindor's voice lines have Blackout's name attached to them. This indicates that the game had been developed with the understanding that the Helicopter Decepticon was meant to be Blackout. However, the dialogue was later re-recorded to refer to the character as Grindor. To get to the bottom of this, I got in contact with Barricade24, who is a well-known modder in the Transformers video game community. He told me that there are a few really early unused text-to-speech voice lines left over in the game's files that refer to Grindor as Blackout. Friendlies getting hit! Blackouts wounded. Blackouts in trouble. They're taking hits! In addition to this, there are two voice lines in the game where Optimus references Grindor's brother. Grindor has joined his brother. Grindor, don't make the same mistake as your brother. These lines indicate that Blackout and Grindor are not one in the same. Though it's not confirmed that Prime was referring to Blackout, I think it is safe to say that he was. Now the last and final thing I would like to cover is why Blackout's name was changed to Grindor in Revenge of the Fallen. And well, there's no official explanation for this name change whatsoever. What makes this trickier is that he isn't even called Blackout or Grindor in the film itself. And if you look at the credits for the film, they don't help us out either since the name Grindor never appears, despite it being rumored that Frank Welker voiced him. However, in the language settings for Revenge of the Fallen, if you turn on English with audio descriptions, a voiceover narrates what's happening in a scene. During the forest battle, the narrator calls the helicopter Grindor. Now, if we pivot from the movie and into the toy line for a second, in the Robot Hero subline for Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, there was a two-pack of Optimus Prime and Blackout. Interestingly enough, Optimus has his Energon blades, which as we know were the weapons he used during the forest battle while facing off against Grindor. Now, in the hopes to clear up the confusion, TF Wiki had a Q&A session with Hasbro in July 2009. The mods would ask, There has been some confusion about the Revenge of the Fallen character Grindor, and whatever relationship he may have with Blackout from the previous line. Further confusion has arisen due to a Robot Heroes release featuring Blackout for the Revenge of the Fallen toy line. Can you please clarify if it was definitely Grindor who appeared in Revenge of the Fallen? And if so, what is his relationship to Blackout? Hasbro would respond with the following, at the time, we needed to proceed with the Robot Heroes product development schedule, and we made the decision to keep Blackout in the line in his original form and colors. However, it is Grindor that appears in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Now, what is very interesting in Hasbro's response is that they did not fully comment on the relationship between Blackout and Grindor. The only definitive info they gave was that Grindor was the one who appeared in the film, but they never directly stated if the two are the same character. 
However, if you did not pick up on it already, the sentence, we made the decision to keep Blackout in the line in his original form and colors, basically confirms that Blackout and Grindor are the same character, since this statement implies that Blackout has some other form that's in different colors. And well, there is one candidate that fits that bill. That, of course, being Grindor. Now, you could say that by original form and colors, Hasbro was referring to the original Robot Heroes Blackout toy. However, the two figures are the exact same mold, so this wouldn't make sense if form was implying the mold of the figure. As for colors, this new Blackout from the Revenge of the Fallen Robot Heroes line has a completely different color scheme from the original. And in Hasbro's reply, they stated that they made the decision to keep him in his original colors. And since this Blackout does not have the colors from the 07 one, Hasbro was clearly not referring to the old Robot Heroes toy, which means only one thing. They were telling us that Blackout and Grindor are the same character. Now, the very last thing I would like to cover is the in-universe explanation on why Blackout changed his name. And well, this can be anyone's best guess. But for my personal headcanon, after being reborn, Blackout decided to relish in this second chance at life. Upon looking back on his death, he realized that he was taken out by insects using primitive technology. He was so disgusted that he went out in this way, he decided that he could no longer bear his current name due to the dishonor it held. So he renamed himself to Grindor, and scanned a new alternate form in the hopes to reclaim the honor he once had. And, just like that, now you know that Blackout and Grindor are the same character. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. Thanks to you guys, Trans Theories is where it is today, so thank you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, keep on theorizing.